We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to the Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. We could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found evidence of nanoplastics falling like snow in the remote high-altitude Alps. At the top of the world you sparkle with seclusion, sheathed in winter's blade from the grubby tracks of those tainted, foul machines. But something hidden lurks beneath, your flawless lustre gently glazed by films of filth and trade and greed, invisible dust that falls like a blizzard across the purity of your pristine skin, marking you forever by the ruined nature of our see-through sin. This poem is inspired by recent research published in Environmental Pollution, which has found evidence of nanoplastics being transported to the Austrian Alps. Plastics are one of the most commonly used materials, with an annual production of 359 million tonnes worldwide, and it is estimated that around 5,000 million tonnes of plastics have been disposed in the environment to date. Once in the environment, Plastics can fragment from bigger to much smaller particles, all the way down to microplastics, i.e. those plastics that are less than 5mm in diameter, and nanoplastics, i.e. those plastics that are less than 1 micrometer in diameter. For context, the width of a human hair is generally between 17 and 180 micrometers. In the case of microplastics, one of the main potential risks are then becoming stuck in the guts of animals. Nanoplastics, on the other hand, are so small that they can penetrate tissues and organs, entering the bloodstream and thereby potentially causing serious health impacts for humans, as well as all other living organisms. While more data are becoming available on urban and remote microplastics pollution, the concentration of airborne nanoplastics has not yet been measured in the natural environment, primarily due to analytical challenges. In this new study, researchers studied a small area at an altitude of just over 3,000 metres at the top of the mountain Hoher Sonnenblick in the Hauertauern National Park in Austria. Every day for a period of six weeks, and in all weather conditions, scientists removed a part of the top layer of snow around a marker at 8am and carefully stored it. They then measured these layers in the laboratory to determine the amount of nanoplastics that had been deposited during this time period. From their analysis, the researchers found more than 200 billion nanoplastic particles were deposited per square metre of surface snow each week, equating to approximately 42 kilograms of nanoplastics falling over one kilometre squared each year. Given the extremely remote location of the measurement station, this raises significant concerns about the amount of nanoplastics that are being deposited in our environment. While further measurements of nanoplastics in urban, rural and remote areas are now needed, to fully assess the extent of nanoplastics pollution, it is clear that this is a huge problem with dramatic consequences for both environmental and human health. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. At the top of the world you sparkle with seclusion, sheathed in winter's blade from the grubby tracks of those tainted, foul machines. But something hidden lurks beneath. Your flawless luster gently glazed by films of filth and trade and greed. Invisible dust that falls like a blizzard across the purity of your pristine skin, marking you forever by the ruined nature of our see-through sin. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. 
In this episode, I'll be reading Twilight in the Alps by Henry Van Dyke. Henry Van Dyke was an American writer, poet, diplomat and clergyman who was born in Germantown, Pennsylvania in 1852. Educated at Princeton, Van Dyke graduated from its theological seminary in 1877 and became a Presbyterian minister. His early works were first read aloud to his congregation in New York as sermons, which brought him recognition as a talented writer. He later served as a professor of English literature at Princeton between 1899 and 1923, and also served as an ambassador to the Netherlands and Luxembourg around the time of the First World War. Although better known for his short stories, Van Dyck was also an accomplished poet, with two full collections of poetry published during his lifetime. Van Dyck died in 1933 in Princeton, New Jersey, at the age of 80. Twilight in the Alps by Henry Van Dyck I love the hour that comes with dusky hair and dewy feet along the alpine bells to lead the cattle forth a thousand bells go chiming after her across the fair and flowery uplands while the rosy flare of sunset on the snowy mountain dwells and valleys darken and the drowsy spells of peace are woven through the purple air Dear is the magic of this hour, she seems to walk before the dark by falling rills and lend a sweeter song to hidden streams. She opens all the doors of night and fills with moving bells the music of my dreams that wander far among the sleeping hills. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.